Hello everyone and welcome to another I Pick My Butt video. More Everdale today and in this video we're going to be talking all about the guilds. And at 330,000 gold that's what it's going to be to take a single villager all the way to level 10 in all six studies. So in this video we want to go over some tips and tricks that you can maximize your gold spending. We'll give you a way to keep track of which villager has which study and what you should be doing with your guild studies when you get your seventh villager. And if you're new to the channel, my name's I Pick My Butt. Well, not really, but my gamer tag is. But at any rate, I am addicted to Everdale and I'm gonna continue making guides on it. So if this is something that's interests you, consider liking and subscribing. So I would say there's about five main things that are involved with these guild studies. Number one, you need to unlock the education tab in your research study at study level six. Number two, you will have to upgrade your village huts to increase the level of your villager. Number three is based by your reputation it will depend on which max level you can make your villager. Number four, you will have to gain experience for whatever study that you're trying to do. For example, if you want to upgrade your villager in farming, well, you're going to need to farm for a little bit to get that experience. And last but not least, number five is all going to depend on what level your guild buildings are inside your valley. As nice as it would be to max a single villager, I really wouldn't recommend it in the beginning. And if you are on path with your valley, you're actually gonna find out the first two you're gonna be able to get is the Woodcutter's Guild and the Farmer's Guild. When your great library gets a little bit further, then you'll run into the clay, the research, and the stonemason, and then go even further down the road, and then you'll finally get the Builder's Guild. To make things easy, I try to name my villagers towards whatever guild study they have. For example, you can see I have Pumpkin, Reek, Research, Woody, Clay, Stoner, and Bob the Builder. And I also try to match whatever their outfit and house is to whatever guild study they have. Now this isn't necessary, but it does make it easier for me on a fly to make sure I have the right person in the right area. Once you have an idea of which villager is going to do what study, I'd say if you have the opportunity, take them all to level one. And as you can, it shouldn't be too difficult to take them to level two. So if you have the money, go ahead and do so. But if you don't, hang on, because once it comes to level three, that's where the cost of things start getting a little expensive. My main focus for myself is I'm focusing on my research as my first opportunity and then my farming as my second. Both of these should be pretty easy to gain the experience on because really you should always have somebody in your study and there is always somebody that's going to be farming. After that, my priorities are going to be stone and clay, followed by the builders, and last, it's going to be the wood cutting because let's be honest, it doesn't take long to generate the wood. And this is the progression I'm gonna be going for for every time I'm able to increase my guild levels. But before I go and start getting people to study guild number four, I'm actually gonna go through each of my builders minus my research one and start putting the farming on them. The nice thing about the farming one is we can also use these out in the valley for things like wheat, sugar, salt, or even wool. For some reason though, cotton, because we're picking it off an animal, that doesn't count to it, but there's plenty of places that we can use it. Plus, if you have all six villagers working inside your village, you're gonna run out of soup pretty fast, so it's nice to be able to just take one of those villagers, throw them on the other pumpkin patch, and keep that soup supply going. Which comes to the next thing is, when you get that seventh builder, yes, you're gonna wanna put him on farming also. And what I'm seeing for the community when it comes to bricks and planks, the actual guilds don't impact those at all, but we still will need the guilds for harvesting the clay and harvesting the wood. But guys, this is the pathing that I'm going for up to guild study number five. So I'd love to hear your thoughts if you agree with this. If you don't, I'd love to hear why and what your pathing would be. But other than that, guys, don't forget, like, subscribe, and remember, I pick my butt.